Well, let's talk about what happened or what didn't happen or what some people claim happens with Di Davies. He's the former head of Royal Protection and joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning, Julia. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, I'm going to play a few clips just to sort of set the scene for people because we need to remember this all happened, of course, on uh, the night of uh, this big award ceremony on Tuesday night that uh, uh, Meghan was receiving uh, a, an, an award uh, in uh, in Manhattan. Uh, she and uh, Harry had arrived. They'd been staying with friends on the um, Upper East Side of Manhattan uh, and they arrived. There were lots of photographers outside, photographers obviously in the event and outside again. Then they claimed they were followed by six blacked out windowed SUVs in their car they had their protection with them but no police protection and they made their way uh, basically zigzagging round uh, Manhattan streets trying to lose this tail eventually they ended up outside a police precinct uh, where they decided to get into a, uh, a waiting um, yellow cab uh, and then they drove around for a bit and then came back and then got into their car meanwhile they said the whole time they were followed by a paparazzi uh, with a near catastrophic pursuit they say people driving wrong way down one-way streets going through red lights and multiple near collisions well, this is what the New York mayor, Eric Adams, had to say about their claims. Uh, I would find it hard to believe that there was a two-hour high-speed chase. That would be, I find it hard to believe, but we will find out the exact duration of it. But if it's uh, 10 minutes, a 10-minute chase is extremely dangerous in New York City. Uh, we have a lot of traffic, a lot of movement, a lot of people are using our streets. Uh, any type of high-speed chase uh, that involves uh, something of that nature uh, is inappropriate. Uh, he also had this to say about the paparazzi. I think all of us, I don't think there's many of us who don't recall how, uh, how the, uh, his mom uh, died. And it would be horrific to lose an innocent bystander during a chase like this and something to have happened uh, to them as well. So I think we have to be extremely responsible. Uh, I thought that was a bit reckless and irresponsible. Reckless and irresponsible. Di Davies is former head of Royal Protection. Do you think the, uh, uh, the, the claims made by the royal couple are verifiably true? Uh, and do you think the paparazzi were reckless and irresponsible? Well, good morning again. Uh, well, there's the truth. There's a media truth. Then there's a Harry and Meghan truth. And then there's the real truth. And frankly, most of us don't really know what actually happened on this occasion. Without a doubt, something did. I don't think it was catastrophic. If it was catastrophic, then you've got to ask questions of his personal security team, why they allowed it to be catastrophic, if indeed it was. The paparazzi are a pain in the backsides. We've seen that over the years. I think it's wrong to compare what happened with his late mother. She was uh, killed by a drunken driver who drove at 80, 90 and plus speeds. Um, surely somebody has learned that the paparazzi pain as they are, they won't cause you harm. They may cause you embarrassment. They may be a pain, but they won't cause you harm, as I've said. So questions need to be asked. If any or half of this is true, what on earth was going on with their security? I mean, meter? that's the issue, isn't it? Now, the timing of this is very interesting, given that we've got Harry in the courts, a number of different cases going on in the courts in the UK, but one of the cases he's bringing is against victims, the British government saying, I would like to have the right to have uh, you know, armed police protection when I'm in the UK. I'm willing to pay for it if necessary. Met said, look, we're not guns for hire. We can't have any old random celebrity saying, I've got a load of money. Can I have your armed police officers, please? Um, and there's this ongoing dispute over this. Now, look, you were in charge of royal protection for many years. It's quite clear to me that given the amount of interest in Harry and Meghan, for whatever reason, a lot of it they bring on themselves, I accept that, they are at risk. But large of that, large, large amount of that risk, certainly for him, is not just people want to take photos. There is a risk for them that someone could pose as paparazzi or, or, or the like, um, who isn't actually, hasn't got a flash gun, they've actually got a gun. Now, he is, a he is under threat because he is a royal prince. It wasn't his fault that he was born into the British royal family. He also served for us in Afghanistan. Um, and he, we know that he killed you New know, Taliban. He's talked about that in his book. We would have known he did that anyway as a helicopter pilot in Afghanistan. He is, he is, he is facing threats because mostly for those two reasons that are largely now out of his control. Does he not have a right to be protected at the expense of the British taxpayer? 
Well, the truth is he is protected. When he came to his father's coronation, he yeah. was protected from the moment he landed to the moment he was escorted by the special escort group back to uh, the airport. So in yeah. truth, if he's there as the king's son, if he's there purely in support of his father, he will get it. In terms of the wider security risk, there is a committee based with civil servants, police and the Home Office who actually on a regular basis decide who in the royal family gets security. It's their decision and they're armed with the best intelligence possible. I don't disagree with what you, some of what you say and on a balance I'm sure they don't either. Mm. But he's mm. a non-working royal yeah. and there is a precedent. Yeah. But if, as I've often said on your programme and others, you know your history of attacks on the royal family, armed police officers rarely pull out their guns. It is so rare as to be exceptional. Yeah. So we need to put it all in perspective with great respect to him. That, yeah, that is very, very important point. Um, the, the reality is, you know, he's now a celebrity. He's married to a celebrity. They court celebrity. They they put their private lives, you know, on Netflix, in books, they, they you know, in interviews, Oprah Winfrey. They've invited the world's media in. Look, you'll know from doing royal protection all the years, and as the royals know, the, you know, if you let light in, you know, you don't get to choose when to pull the blinds back down again. That is the reality. I would say in their defence, they have the right to go to an event that is a public event and be filmed and, and photographed going in and out. But they also have a right to go home without being tailed. I could imagine that even if you're used to it, even if it's happened to you 20 times before, it's still very scary to have a what they claim six SUVs following them and paparazzi shooting uh, photographs all the time of you when you're in a car trying to get home and not wanting your friend's home that you're staying in to become public knowledge to the property. I can understand all that. But the question is when they make these claims is whether or not, as you say, we, we can believe their version of the truth. Particularly, let's have a little listen to another very short clip. This is the, 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 the driver of the yellow New York cab that they got into with Harry Meghan and her mo mother, Doria, um, with just one police bodyguard sitting in the front. They get into a complete stranger's car, effectively, while they're apparently being tailed. Um, and this is what he said happened in this, as we're told, near-catastrophic car chase. A paparazzi, they just came out of nowhere and just started taking pictures and flashing. It was like a, like, how do you say, like a light show all of a sudden. And they were just about to give me the location. They never gave me the location where they were going. And then the security guard told me, circle back. As we are circling back, uh, you see the paparazzi's car following my car. My feelings were normal, but I'm sure their feelings were more intense because his, uh, uh, what his mom, uh, Princess Diana, died in a crash uh, running away from uh, uh, the paparazzis. So I think uh, their emotions must have been higher. He was calm, he says, Di Davies. So it certainly wasn't a high-speed car chase for him, whether it was beforehand or not. Even though, say, the New York mayor is questioning that on the basis that, you know, 10 p.m. on a weekday night in Manhattan would be absolute gridlock. Anyone who's been to New York, I'm sure you have many times, uh, looking after world protection, you know, you can barely move. You're lucky to be moving at 20 bars per hour, let alone at high speed. Um, um, what do you make of these different versions of events, though? Well, as I said, there's the truth and the Meg Meghan yeah. and Harry's truth. And we've seen on numerous occasions that that's slightly exaggerated here and there. I make no comment. The only comment I would say, I find it extraordinary that a man who's got used to this now and has fought, as you rightly say, in Afghanistan, has come out in his book and others saying he killed people, that he's so frightened, yeah. silly, that he has to order his security team or uh, tell them to behave in such a way. It is quite extraordinary. And then, as you say, uh, these these things should be reconnoitered. In other words, if you go to an event, you go before, his team goes before, afterwards, and you look at routes. You have a plan A, B, and C. And surely they would have uh, developed the routes. They would should and know the area. And decoy cars. Surely decoy cars. And, well, and, you, and here's the car, the, the car, two or three cars that follow you behind. I mean, it's terrible they have to do this. Um, and then you, you know, you drive through the light and then the other cars block. So the other other the cars following them can't get there. I know they've got motorbikes as well that can often get through. But, but I mean, most celebrities seem to manage to do this. Well, I don't know of anybody else who has this kind of nonsense. But there oh. again, they do. Uh, I think, uh, in fairness, as always, we don't know the full facts. 
yeah. and as an ex-copper, I like facts as against supposition. So I would wait to see if he's going to produce. Apparently, he was so able to take filming. I was uh, going to ask you the... next about that. If Harry was himself seen, there are photographs apparently in instance of him filming out of the window of the cab, um, whether that says how terrified he was or not. Now, that footage could be released quite easily by them. We, I think a lot of us are wondering whether that just is uh, the basis of the next Netflix series for them. Well, you could be cynical. I'm somewhat cynical about all of this. Um, it comes at a very opportune time, some might say. But on balance, look, he, he has a perfect right to go and do what he and his wife and his mother-in-law yep. want to do without being harassed. Unfortunately, he's chosen to live in, in the United States where the rules are very different. Uh, here, it wouldn't happen. Yep. Um, and and it's what, ironic, explain, really. explain why it wouldn't happen here. Well, because uh, one of uh, the Leveson inquiry and other uh, regulations that come out, but also, frankly, under the Public Order Act, if you behave like this, causing alarm or distress, you would be committing a criminal offence for which you could be arrested. Yeah. So there is a balance, as always in life. Yeah, I'm, but I'm, uh, with great re re respect to him, boy, he and she, they don't half stop courting publicity. Perhaps if they just kept quiet for a little while, they wouldn't be this huge outpouring and look at the news in this in this country we haven't stopped talking about this yep. since uh, last night no it exactly goes on and on and on exactly and, that, I mean, and that is the thing i mean i know and i always sort of feel a bit dirty and ashamed of myself for doing it but i always find it fascinating as you say the police said there'd be no collisions injuries or arrests they said that it had been quote a bit chaotic which clearly it would have been just final question to you some outcry from the usual suspects on twitter yesterday that uh, king charles the palace had issued a statement about uh, something else he'd done yesterday but it, there was no statement sort of about this and, and expressing concern, and we understand that they've made the, the king and uh, and and, and, and Prince William have made no contact with Harry and Meghan to see how they are. Um, realistically, we wouldn't expect that, would we? No, we wouldn't. And, and I think we've learned less said the better, really, as far as those two are concerned. And I can share with you here I am talking about it. Perhaps I should shut up too. Likewise, both of us. Zip it. <laughs> 919 is the time. Pleasure to talk to you. So great to get your long uh, career and expertise there, Di Davies. Uh